Welcome to the Story Fulfilled Podcast, where we deep dive into how each character and story in the Bible comes together to fulfill the story of God. I'm Abby. I'm Fletcher. And I'm Jay. And today's story is the OG helper, Eve. So, Eve. Okay, do we need to Eve. explain what OG is for anyone? OG, I don't know. We have the most original <laughs> gangster. Original gangster. Okay, Eve. we'll just leave and it at that. I just want to <laughs> shout out to Aunt Tanya, who said that um, Eve was the main character. Well, we're going to talk about that today. So. All right. Yeah. 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 Well, speaking of that, it's the first episode of season two. <gasps> Woo! Yeah, it is. So welcome. Welcome. I'm sure you've heard our trailer already. So we're talking about <laughs> helpers this That's season. Right. Yes. So let's get started. So sure. as we love to do, we have a question. I'd love to start off with a question. And so uh, in Mario Party, the video game, you can land on a special space. And after landing on that space, you get an ally for the rest of the game. And they can help, help you by giving you uh, bonuses. Or sometimes they might actually work against you and and you lose things so the question is if you got to pick one fictional sidekick to be your ally for a week who would you pick that's always my favorite space to land on in mario I, i'm gonna put it out here i have landed on that space once in my oh, entire mario party career that's and sad. it's awful I've, it's a terrible feeling when i don't land never on come it. near it i played i've only played <laughs> mario party the one time with our young adults and i did no, not, no, that was, oh, no that was smash bro Bros. that wasn't mario that's party right. See, no. it, I, yeah. we gotta play yeah. mario party it's a lot of fun yeah i like all the allies except for mini bowser um but yeah. Okay. So okay. what's your answer then? Uh, Is it Mini Bowser? No. <laughs> I don't want I don't want Mini Bowser to be my ally. I don't know. I didn't actually answer this question. I just thought of it. All right, I'm gonna give you time to think. I've got one. Okay, good. Uh, because as we've always as we've uncovered throughout, it's best to go first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. my sidekick that I would want for a week would be Jack Jack from the incredible oh my gosh <laughs> that's so good because Amazing. uh and it it maybe fits in with the theme of the week a little bit or the this the theme of the season a little bit because jack jack seems to be pretty useless through the movies until he finally <laughs> becomes useful and then he actually ends up being pretty much the the main the ultimate the ultimate yeah. hero yeah in, he's in got movies. like every superpower yeah, yeah he's amazing uncontrollable and he would definitely take care of the raccoon problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, I Jack, love that Jack, answer Jack, so Jack. much. Fletcher, do you have one? Sure, I'll go. Uh, okay. Mine is going to be Groot from Guardians <laughs> oh of the Galaxy. Goodness. He doesn't, he's not much of a conversationalist, but <laughs> he's the good. muscle. Okay. I, I can be the brain, I guess, like Rocket Raccoon. There you go. But okay. I'm going to go with, right. with Groot. Rocket and Groot. He'd be fun. I am Groot. Yeah. He saves everyone. He has that he big moment. Has, yeah. And then he becomes and then he's a baby, teenage Groot. And then he's dancing. Yeah. He's pretty, he's good to be around. Except when he's a teenager. He's a little sassy Angsty. Then. Angsty group. Angsty, yeah. Mm-hmm. Angsty, Angsty group. group yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I think I'm going to... I don't know if I'm 100. Okay. We're going to go with this. Um, I think I'm going to go with Anna from Frozen because she's really fun. She's the main character. I know. I beg your pardon. Yeah, but I'm the main character. <laughs> right. You're, you're. <laughs> so, she's your sidekick. She's my okay. sidekick because I want somebody that's nice to be around. I've, I'm learning that. <laughs> honestly, like <laughs> where I work, the more I'm learning more and more that I like nice, just genuinely nice people. <laughs> and she's just genuinely nice. Yeah. I mean, and, you're onto something there. I like, yeah. it, it, I like she's, nice people. She's just it's, really nice. And she's super loyal. And she's a little crazy. Keeps but, it exciting, though. Yeah, why, exactly. why wouldn't you want to be There's a little always crazy? an adventure. Right. No, I feel like you just changed all the rules, though, because we were, I think we were operating Picking on kicks. like sidekicks. Actual oh. sidekick. I thought you were gonna go Frozen, oh. like. So uh, I mean, like the, maybe my oh. maybe I pick Spend. Superman as my oh, sidekick, yeah. exactly. then, right? Oh, like, okay, shoot the dog. So and try and again, then he just c- <gasps> no. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we have time. <laughs> I can't think of a sidekick. We'll let you keep it, but okay, you can't can, keep. Okay, then I'll take the Olaf. Like if I'm just gonna, I'll okay. just stick with the same movie. I'll take Olaf. He's nice too. He's nice too. He is, and he has some good existential questions. It's true. So Samantha. <laughs> I don't even know what Samantha. Um, makes sense. Tonight. All right. So as always, we do encourage you to read the stories that we're we're going through for yourselves uh, to get the whole picture of what's going on. And today's story takes place right at the beginning of the Bible in what? Genesis 
chapters two to four. So here we go. So it's a new season, same format. We're starting off today. We're talking about the first woman ever, the mother of all living, Eve herself. Who is not to be confused with Mother Nature. Right. No. (laughs) I don't think Mother Nature is in the Bible. (laughs) No, 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 not a thing. Um, So a little bit of the history. This it's pretty easy actually it it happens in the beginning so just for historical context so what date would that be uh, day <laughs> day kidding. 1 okay well, actually whoa, it's not whoa. it's day 6, day six. if we we're, if we're uh, being accurate to the account uh, so eve was created on the 6th day of creation it is found in the book of genesis and the book of genesis as we've already mentioned in season 1 was written by moses inspired by God while the Israelites were in the wilderness. And so that puts the timing of the writing roughly around 1400 BC. And um, yeah, there's there's debate around that date. There's alternate dates. There's um, difficulties in pinpointing dates because of the way that the the writing is compiled and, and what And what how archaeology is. thinks and yeah, all that stuff. Right. Yes. Yes, and so the location is obviously in the Garden of Eden. So modern day, we obviously don't know where it is, but they actually wonder if it was around Iraq, which was part of Mesopotamia, right? Is which that is... because they have found a flaming sword? Or... Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah that's okay. exactly it. Somebody got <laughs> hit trees by the that are buried, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, But yeah, no, probably somewhere in Iraq, Mesopotamia area. We don't know where it is today. Uh, But there is a description of Eden in Genesis 2 if you want to read it. But if you read a couple chapters more, then everything was destroyed in the world anyway. So it's not super helpful. But yes, that's kind of where we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off with the story. Takes place, Genesis chapter 1, 2, 3... Uh, So chapter one is more of a summary of what happened, uh, while chapter two is a narrative of what God did. So you see the seven days of creation in chapter one, and then chapter two, it goes into detail of what's going on. One of the other, I'll just interject, one of the other theories around chapter one is that um, there, there was a lot of, there were a lot of other creation accounts that existed among the other nations and... Um, and a lot of those had to do with like warring gods mm-hmm. and a lot of chaos and um, the the gods being angry and then the winning god winning the right to place humanity in its slavery. And so mm-hmm. if you read through chapter one, you see how in a number of ways it actually addresses those other creation accounts. And, and so Moses, inspired by God, is saying to the Israelites, hey, this is the, these are the stories that you've heard, but this is the way that hmm. God has actually done it. And, and, and we have other truths about who God is revealed in that as well. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's really cool. So chapter one, God has created everything and he's seen that it is good. And then he says, this is on the sixth day, let us make man in our image. So he creates them male and female in his image. I just want to ask our, that's plural. Yeah. And that's in Genesis. It I is. like that a lot. It mm. is. And uh, yeah, that this is where um, we would say that our first hint, hint yeah. of a Trinitarian God uh, mm-hmm. is there. Although there's no explicit reference to mm-hmm. the Trinity, there is. Um, it is speaking of God as being in communion with mm-hmm. Himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jesus, and, and, and I think you Holy also Spirit. see that in like in Job when they're talking about the heavenly council right. and that kind of stuff. Right. So there is some sort of. Pl- is plurality that sounds like yeah. a word, plurality, yeah. a word. <laughs> of of god in that sense and that's right at the very beginning so that's yeah. really cool so anyway he makes the male and female and then chapter two tells us what actually happened so god forms adam out of the dust and breathes life into his nost- nostrils and then he makes a garden for him and with all the trees that had good fruit you can read chapter two again and then it gives a full description of eden and then god said that it is not good for man to be alone so he decides to put Adam to work and he starts getting to, to name all the animals, all the birds, all the fish and everything. And it's through that he couldn't find a suitable helper among them. Mm-hmm. Um, so God said... Wait, one second. Yeah. Can you imagine if it, like the helper had been like a giraffe? Man. 
or a fish. A fish. Fish helper. A goldfish. <laughs> I mean, a giraffe would be a great helper it because, be. like, you hey, can, can you just true. reach that for yeah. me? It's yeah, true. No a goldfish would not because it Go- loses no. its memory every three seconds. Hey, can you go do this? And then you're like, yeah, I got this. What and did you ask leaves. me to do again? Just keep swimming. <laughs> it doesn't just remember. Keep... What did you yeah. ask me Think to do again? Think of all, like, how bad some of the options could have been. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. A okay. mosquito? Oh. Ooh, that would not have been a great helper. Yeah, God and I have a conversation in store about mosquitoes. We got to figure that out. He couldn't find a suitable helper among them. And that's an important word is suitable and or a helper fit for him. Right. Those are the words we're going to talk about later. Those yeah. are very important. Yeah. So God decides to put Adam to sleep and he ends up taking a rib from him. Ouch. And with that, he forms a woman, mm-hmm. the woman. <laughs> and um, it actually talks about it says rib, but it's actually like a section of flesh. Yeah. And it's his whole side that he kind of takes from him. Right, because um, if if you search a biology textbook, you'd have a hard time finding less ribs in a in a man than a woman, right? So, well, I don't know if it was genetically passed down. If if <laughs> one rib taken out is genetic information, but right. who knows? Right. <laughs> like if you get a nose job, does your new nose get passed yeah, on to your kid? And your kids kid? now have better noses. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Or if you lose a leg, your kids oh. get no leg. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so. Adam then meets Eve and cries out with joy. And he's like, alas, you know, I found the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And the Hebrew words for man and woman are actually ish and asha, isha. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's the same essentially word with a little addition, man, woman. And it's the same thing. And then we were talking about earlier, Adam and Eve are actually the Jewish words Mm. for man. And they became that and woman. Right. Um, so next up they're created and then we're not actually going to talk about the fall, but they eat the fruit and we'll talk about what happens. If you don't know what the fall is again, read Genesis two. It's fantastic. So they eat the fruit and they weren't supposed to, and God ends up cursing the serpent, the man and the woman. So the curse to the woman was, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing in pain. You shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband's, but he shall rule over you. Mm. So that's not... I hate that so It's a, it's a hard curse <laughs> like, to it's hear. Not it's a great, rough. Yeah. Yep. Childbearing, yeah. that sucks. Yep. I can't imagine having to <laughs> push a baby out. Oh, I've boy. said to Josh so many times that, Josh is my husband, um, that if he were the one that could ha- be pregnant, I would have a lot less issues with having children. <laughs> 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 and he's like, I wish I could. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I will say, like to hear I will say, say this much by by way of observation, you will recover. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's eventually, okay. eventually, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> well, <laughs> and you think how many people have more than one kid? It couldn't have right? been that yeah, bad. You got I mean, three kids. Goodness. Yeah, you, guys, I mean, you get a baby out of it. That's pretty great. Have you seen those videos of <laughs> the men on easier. YouTube who yeah. are having like fake li- childbirth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can't even make it through. It's pretty funny. They're With like so the suits funny. on. Yeah. I'll try I know, to find them for I know the show for a fact that I would be done for. But <sighs> my wife has had three children and survived. And she's a strong, go. independent woman. And she's even nice to them. It's not there like you, you did Most this of the time. You hurt me. No. She's great. So we need to move on. Yeah. Well, speaking of arguing with men and women, that is a huge point of it. That your desire shall be contrary to your husband's, right. but he shall rule over you. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But um, the next thing that happened is Adam actually names his wife Eve, which means the mother of all living. Yeah. Um, and what I find cool, the, the verse before that, when God's asking, you know, why are you guys clothed? What have you done? And, he, and Adam goes, you know, she made me eat the fruit. Right. And then he gets called the on The woman it. that you gave me. Yeah. So he's blaming her and God all yeah. at once. He really wants to get out of it. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, he's it all me. excuses at this it's point. It's not my fault. Yeah. So, and then, then they get this curse and God has talked to them. And then after the fact, he names her Eve for the mother of all living because that promise that God has made of childbearing. And right. he responds basically in faith saying that you're the one who's going to yeah. be the next person. And his, his tone has changed. He's, yeah. He's, he's like, changed. oh, I, I still do love her. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. There's respect in that too, yeah. which yeah. I think is cool. Not like yes, love, but also respect. Yeah. So that's the story. It's not a long one, but we have the creation of of man and woman. Right. And why we're doing this in the helper season is because the verse says we cannot. F- let's let's make a helper for him that right. is fit. A, su- a suitable helper. A suitable helper. helper. Fit, yeah. 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 So the words actually in Hebrew for fit helper or ezer kenegdo. 
Mm. I'm not going to pronounce that correctly. (laughs) I'll put the how they're spelled in English in the show notes. Yeah, that's not Hebrew for that. (laughs) So Ezer meaning helper, and it's not just in the sense of an underling or a servant. The word Ezer is actually used several times throughout the Old Testament in reference to God helping the Israelites. Right. And that's why, yeah, yeah, well, and, and I mean that's why you know our trailer for this season highlighting that the <laughs> the sidekicks actually come through to save the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why it really comes into play here because um, because this word is used in a very empowering way, and oftentimes it's actually used uh, to reference as a reference to God helping mm-hmm. the Israelites, and um, so some of the examples of that in Psalm. Uh, 70 verse size, uh, sorry, in Psalm 70 verse 5, it says, but I am afflicted and needy. Hasten to me, O God, you are my help and my deliverer, O Lord, you do not delay. And so the same word help is used there in speaking about God being the deliverer. And then um, I love Psalm 121. Uh, and it says, I will lift my eyes to the mountains from where shall my help come from? And it's it's speaking of God as being that that help um who is yeah who is helping in in a way of it's clearly actually, not a servant yeah position. yeah it's yeah. fighting for and alongside of and causing causing me to be able to get through uh what it is that i'm that i'm looking to get how many through. times was it i know you can pull up how many times it was used i think in he the said Old it was Testament. 21 21 verses. i think when i was reading it was like i think yeah 21 verses it's used and i think 16 or something is used in that sense and the other ones are for israelites helping other people right but yeah right 16 of them is is it's God's position. So that's in a position, of not just of equality, but su- superiority in yeah. some sense. Right, right. And so the, the, so what that means about woman being named helper. that is that as a helper is that uh, as an equal, mm-hmm. as, as it's not a subordination thing. It's not about um, coming under and uh, yes, master mm-hmm. kind of... <laughs> um, Submission mm-hmm. to, to the man. It's not to serve the man, but to serve with. To serve with, with that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So the next part is fit. So, or, or what is the word? Corresponding. So, connecto. It's more of a complicated word because it isn't actually used anywhere else in the Old Testament. But based on the Hebrew wor- wor- root words, linguists have kind of figured out what, what it means. And it's something like it's corresponding to or equal to. Or... So the woman is, is equal and suitable, but in a sense is also opposite excuse me, because of that root meaning of the word. And that, right. that fits with the curse that we actually see in, in Genesis 3. Your desires contrary. shall be contrary yeah. to your husband's. Yeah. So there's a clashing in that way. And that's really cool because you are equal, but we're not the same. Right. Because like otherwise that. they just use, you know, yeah, same I, as opposed to contrary and equal. Which is but, true. I like yeah. that too because I feel like nowadays a lot of people in our culture are trying to say, oh yeah, like men and women are the same. Everybody's the same. And I'm like, no, right. there are differences. Mm-hmm. And that's an okay thing. It's not a bad thing. Like the way that there are some people think differently and some people mm-hmm. are built differently. Mm-hmm. And like that's not Meant a for bad different thing. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a reason we weren't created the same. Right. Yeah. And, and what I think is really interesting about this is – um. Wrapped up in all of this, God has said, let us make humanity in our image, yeah. male, male and, female. and female. And so we are, we uncover um, aspects of who God is in male and female people. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's highlighted. Yeah, the image of God is found in both. It, found yeah, in both, that's absolutely. right. Absolutely. Like which, that. which I think is, is very important. And it also... Um, I think it helps us in understanding God because we we always we do use male pronouns for God um, as we refer to Him and and Jesus refers to God as Father um, and and in no way am I suggesting that He's wrong in doing that <laughs> uh, but I do think that um, for for us it's helpful to think of God as parent in that way because there is a nurturing side that we attribute to our mothers more than we do to our fathers and that's found throughout uh scripture so especially when we see god referred to as el shaddai because that is um, speaking about kind of a nurturing and, and bringing into the bosom is kind of the language that's wrapped up in in the name el shaddai and so it's a nurturing side of god that is typically associated with the mother mm-hmm. and 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 more female attributes, but we see that male and female is actually 
all coming together to make make up who yeah. God is. Yeah, absolutely. There's this really cool movement right now. It's um, I forget what it's called, but it's this group of women artists that. So I think like Christy Knuckles and Amy Grant and. Um, Ellie Holcomb, like a bunch of Christian artists have been getting together and they've been exploring stories of women in the mm-hmm. Bible. And one of the things that they talk about, the, the podcast that they actually have as well is called, oh, I forget. I'm going to put it in the show notes. Um, it's something like... <laughs> It'll be there. <laughs> it will be there, yes. Um, but they also have an album, like a, a song album, and they wrote one called Rahab's Lullaby. But they're mm-hmm. talking about how they're seeing the mothering heart of God. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's something that's really cool because that hasn't really been explored a lot is that mothering side and so i thought it was super interesting that they did that and i think it's beautiful that this movement that they're doing yeah i really like the takeaway of of men and women were both created in the image of god so to Mm -hmm. to get to know the character of god you have to look at both Both. sides you can't just look at the father aspect you have to have because he created the female for a reason right Right. and and his image is in there somewhere as well right so uh, is there anything else I, I wanted to add? I don't like when we've kind of talked about this, but I hear it all the time with people that aren't Christians or haven't read the Bible and they go, oh, you know, women, you know, they're nothing in the Bible. They're right. trashed all the time. And I'm like, okay, open to the first page right. and read this first yeah. couple chapters. In Hebrew, read it in read Hebrew. It in Hebrew. <laughs> read it in Hebrew. Right. And you see this beautiful thing at the very beginning. And it's right. like, it, it starts off the entire Bible with this equality and this, Dif- difference but equal at the same time and i i really like that so which was right. highly countercultural. yes that is not that something that was very too. common yeah and and i think it's also we see you know there is an order to creation that is disrupted by the fall and part of what we see through humanity the history of humanity mm-hmm. which is highlighted in the stories of scripture we see uh, a mistreatment of women that takes mm-hmm. place. And so um, the the fact that some of that stuff is, is actually found in the Bible is actually, it's there to highlight the fact that that's a fall from what God has intended for mm-hmm. humanity and, and the proper way for us to be engaging with one another and, and treating each other. And so that actually does, it's, it points to the goodness mm-hmm. of God, which mm-hmm. is that he doesn't want that. He yeah, like, want that yeah you see exactly that in the curse in chapter three that I keep right. mentioning, but yeah. it's he shall rule over you. That wasn't how it was intentionally. Exactly. That was a that was caused by the fall. Yeah. So that's something that we've seen throughout history as a cause of the fall. And right. We can definitely point out examples of that happening. Yeah. So there's this saying that I it's in French, but it's, it's cote à cote, which means rib to rib, and mm. it's like you're standing there as equals rib to rib. You're from the same flesh. You're from the same right. stuff. So, except Abby. for maybe your parents, Fletcher, because your dad's a little shorter than your mom. <laughs> so I don't know if they're actually rib to rib. No, it's like <laughs> head to shoulder. <laughs> and my dad is quite small. Rib to belly. Rib to belly. There you go. Yeah, or me and Riley. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you. Should put some yeah. pictures up. All right. So that leads to our final question: How does this story help to fulfill the story of God through the rest of the Bible? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we've we've kind of just talked about it a little bit too, right? Like, is Adam and Eve? They sin, and uh, there's disruption in the order of what God has created. And uh, but we see that in the original design for male and female, that it wasn't meant to be that way. And and that's what God is pointing us to uh, throughout. So um, yeah, I think we see it there for sure. One. Uh aspect of it it's called the proto evangelium and you can look that up we're not going to talk about it too much but it's essentially the first prophecy or first pointing towards the need of a savior yeah and it's when god is talking to the serpent and he places the curse and it says he shall bruise your head and they're talking about the seed that eve will produce mm. and you shall bruise his heel and this is in reference right. uh to the coming savior that eventually will happen and it's kind of something that we talked about last season with um the call of abraham this is the next Right. Or this is the very, very first time we hear of a seed yep. coming to save the world. Right. They're pointing to Jesus. Pointing to Jesus. So you yeah. can look that up. That is the very simplified version of what's yeah. actually going on. You can yeah. you can read it. And uh, and the story also it lays the foundation for marriage. Absolutely. Uh, we see uh, Eve came from Adam's flesh. 
we see. And so, and then it carries on to say, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall hold fast to his wife. Another word that's used is cleave Mm -hmm. to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And so we see this coming together of man and woman uh, in marriage. And Jesus actually, when he speaks about marriage, he refers to this verse uh, and God's design for uh, for marriage. Mm-hmm. So, awesome, good answers, guys. Yeah, fun stuff. I think that's all that we have for today. That's, yeah, I think so. What do you think? Do you think Eve is a helper or a main character? That's what uh-huh. I want to know. I think because of that verse, it's a helper, but that's not a demeaning term. Right. That's what I want to say. Right. You know, right. and we're then, learning what that means. But then, because of the proto evangelism, evangelum. Yeah. Um, easy for you to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he maybe say well. maybe the main character, right? Exactly. Because through her seed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for listening. Well, Hope to see you next week. Bye Have for a now. Great week.